The adolescent Peruvian coming of age story seems a tad more intense than most others. Welcome, my mere mortalites, to another round of the book reviews. My name is Karen, and I'm here to help you transcend beyond your own mere mortality with these book reviews by learning something new, something interesting, something a bit left field. And this is certainly left field. It is the book Cubs and Other Stories by Mario Vargas Llosa, or in Spanish, Los Jefe y Los Cachorros. This book is a real mixture all over. So there's seven stories contained within it, very short stories which are fictional, but quite lifelike in a way. And it's mostly involving young men and young boys, hence the adolescent coming of age stories. The title, The Cubs, was actually published later. This was published in 1967. And the other stories were published in 1959. Now I read the Spanish version and this had about 135 pages. So in the English version, I'm imagining that's probably closer to 110. So quite short writing and a quite short book. I'll give a quick one line sum up of each story so that you have a feel for what they're about. So the first is Los Jefes, this is the bosses. So it's about school children who are under the rule, under the thumb of a tyrannical schoolmaster and how they try and defy him. The second, El Desafio, this is the challenge. So it's about two young men involved in a knife fight about honor. The third, El Hermano Menor, the younger brother. So there's about two siblings who go into the bush to murder a supposed rapist of their sister. Dio Domingo, Sunday Day. This is about teenagers and their stupid bravery and trying to impress a girl constantly one-upping each other and daring each other. Un visitante, a visitor, is about a woman living in the bush who is visited by a man kidnapped, used as bait to capture another escaped convict by the police and then his subsequent betrayal by the police. El abuelo, the grandfather, is about a grandfather who's finds a skull and is obsessed with it and goes a little bit crazy over it. And finally, Los Cachorros, the titular story, this is The Cubs. So it's about a group of young men where one of them is castrated while quite young and how they grew up to be wild, rebellious and doing all these crazy things. About the author, Mario Vargas Llosa, I've read one of his books before, but this was an English version of it. So my first time reading it in Spanish. He's a Peruvian author, very, very famous and well-renowned. He's part of the Latin American boom period as such was Gabriel Garcia Marquez and people like that. And this book was taken from his newspaper subscriptions, his writings there. So these small stories appeared elsewhere and then were published, hence the different dates between 1959 and 1967. There's only one main theme I gained from this book as it is so short and the stories are so different and varied that it's hard to really connect them all together. But the one thing I got was young men, risk takers due to different values. So young men are stupid, especially stupid, ridiculously stupid. We see this with the death statistics of dying in weird, unusual ways in motorcycle accidents, bungee jumping, base jumping, all of these extreme sorts of things and taking real, what you would say are unnecessary risks. And the question is why though, why does this happen? And doing a bit of research outside of the book, it seems that we all seem to evaluate risks in the same method, the process is the same. So the way that I look at taking an action is roughly the same as a young man, as an old man, as a young woman, as an old woman, the process that you go through of deciding on the values that you would associate compared to the risk is the same process, but the values are different. And this is what I think is a critical thing. And if I had to guess a couple of things that young men might really value more highly is sex, attention, definitely sex, so, uh, fame, honor, courage, glory, these sorts of things, which might push them more to skewing their risk evaluation process in a, in a different manner. We see this in the story in so many ways. I can't think of another group of people who will do such varied stupid activities such as getting into knife fights, of diving into the ocean in a challenge to see who can swim the furthest when the conditions are tumultuous, ripe for drowning in, for going out into the bush to murder another person for the you know honor, privilege of your sister, of driving fast cars recklessly while drunk and all of these different things. Basically, all of the stories had some sort of element of a young man doing something really stupid. For me, I think all of this comes back to sex again. And so even though they might say, oh, I'm doing it for attention or social status or to prove my loyalty or courage or whatever it is, all of that, I think, really drives 
when you look at the root of it is that they want to impress, get all of these things to be able to have sex with a girl. And just speaking from my personal experience in that puberty age, that teenager age, that was all that was on my mind. It was like a haze. You can't really think of anything else. So when I think of this, I really just go, yeah, this, their actions are pretty much determined and can be explained by their desire for sex. Now you might actually ask, oh, but what about Pichula, Pichulita in, in his, uh, in his story? So this is about Cuella where he does get castrated by a dog. And even then I would say, I think it's not super clear in the book, but I'm pretty sure it was only his penis that got torn off. He wasn't fully castrated. So he still had the sex drive and then it's even worse for him because he has no ability to, to satisfy that if he doesn't have a penis, you know, the, the organ for getting rid of the sperm and semen and all that sort of stuff. My observations, the slang is out of control in this book. I could barely read it. So my Spanish is fairly decent, but while reading this book, I continually had to go back to the computer, look up a word, come back to it, try and decipher it. It is just full, full, full of slang so much so that my reading was interrupted and I really couldn't even guess what some of the things were because they were just words that I had no idea. I imagine it would be similar to someone whose English is not their first language reading a book like We of the Never Never, which is so full of Australian slang that even me being Australian, I had to go, whoa, this is, uh, this is pretty intense. Another theme that you could maybe gain out of from this is there really was an undercurrent of violence in all of these things as well, of, of competition. Maybe El Abuelo is a little bit different, the grandfather, because it's, yeah, that story actually for me didn't really seem to fit into this book, but that's okay. Uh, the violence though, that aspect of it, is that related to sex as well? Or is that something completely different? Is that a, another value, another instinct that is just born in these young men and, and is created in them? Or is that something else uh, that's a, a fascinating thing to look at? And finally, although the locations are set all around in Peru, it is really Lima inspired. So many of the stories occur in the big city of Lima, the capital of Peru. And once again, it's just awesome actually having been to some of these places to myself to be like, oh, Miraflores, I was there. I, I know what that is. I can imagine that. Oh, the ocean that they're talking about. Ah, I, I know exactly the point that they're talking about. That's super, super cool. So in summary, my thoughts on books, which are collections of things has not altered in the slightest. For those who don't know, I just don't appreciate books that grab different pieces of publications from elsewhere and then just jam them all into one book without some sort of narrative. This was quite a difficult read in Spanish. Maybe it would be more understandable in English, but even then it was a bit of a snooze fest. For me, it wasn't bad, but there was nothing stand out in it either. This potentially could have been due to the young age of Mario Vargas Llosa as he was writing this. So all in all, Cubs and other stories, I'm giving a four and a half out of 10. A bit meh. Y Dios mío, hemos llegado al fin. My God, we have reached the finale. Thank you, my mere modelites, for joining me through this video to this point of the book review. I would love to know your thoughts on Mario Vargas Llosa. If you've read the story, that's super cool. If you've read some of his more other famous works, I'd also love to know about that. If you can do all the nice things, like, subscribe, comment, campanita, the bell, that would all really help me out. And other than that, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Karen out.